Hello everybody, my name is Mahsa Sacha, a PhD student at ETH Zurich. Uh, today I'm going to talk about one of our research in the Department of Earth Sciences. This research uh, focuses on reliable prediction of fracture path in anisotropic rocks. At the first stage, I introduce the most accurate and notable fracture growth criteria, which have been used in the lit literature and they are also applicable in anisotropic solids. These models are as follows. The first one is the NTS or maximum tangential stress. According to this model, the crack grows along the direction at which the tangential stress or sigma theta reaches its critical value, which is often associated with the tensile strength of the material. Here we can see the mathematical formulation of this model. We can see that the normalized function sigma theta is defined as the ratio of tangential stress to the critical value. Once this normalized functions, uh, function reaches unity and becomes maximum, then we can determine the fracture uh, angle. And the other criterion is the maximum energy release rate or MERR. According to this criterion, fracturing takes place along the direction at which the maximum energy is released for an increment of crack extension. Again, we have the mathematical formulation, which says that once you can uh, find the maximum point of this normalized function, then you can determine the kink angle of fracture. And the last one is the maximum strain energy density or MSED, which postulates that the crack grows along the direction at which the local strain energy density or S theta becomes a stationary. This stationary points, depending on the material that we have, may be either the maximum value of the function or the minimum value of the function. For example, in isotropic cases, we are looking for the minimum strain energy density to determine the angle at which fracturing happens. And something that I need to mention here is that all these models, they are also applicable in isotropic cases. In anisotropic solids, there is a main difference that all of these critical values in the denominator uh, of the normalized uh, function are now direction dependent property. So now it, the question is that why I should consider the effect of anisotropy? The answer is quite simple. The first reason is that anisotropy in rock mass formations is very common. The second reason is that besides geometry and loading, anisotropy is another uh, parameter that can affect the fracture path. Here we can see a schematic view of hydraulic fracturing in the subsurface. Uh, these parallel lines uh, stand for the anisotropy and as we can see here even in this borehole which aligns with one of the principal stresses the hydraulic fractures near to the borehole are affected by the presence of anisotropy so we can see that anisotropy is one of the most important parameters in determining the angle at which hydraulic fracturing happens. Uh, another important thing here is that in an isotropic solid with low to moderate anisotropy ratios, once we assume that geometry is fixed, there is a significant interaction between loading and anisotropy. Here we can see an illustration for this concept. We can see that here, these parallel lines again stand for the weakest plane of anisotropic material. And as we know, this anisotropy always tends to drive the fracture along the direction which is near to this weakest plane. But the effect of loading uh, 
and how it uh, interacts with the effect of anisotropy is really significant when we have this sort of anisotropic solids. So we can see, for example, in this configuration in which the mode 2 SIF is negative or we have the negative mode mixity ratios, the, the effect of loading is uh, in such a way that reinforce the effect of anisotropy. But in this case, that we have positive mode 2 SIF or positive mode mixity ratios, it seems that the loading is competing with the anisotropy and therefore the king angle is uh, in the negative region and it's um, uh, it's not close to the weakest plane of uh, material so to observe this uh, interaction between these two parameters we designed a sort of control sets of experiments to observe this interplay. And we had different mode mixity ratios lambda, which we can see here the definition of this parameter. And at each uh, loading ratio, we had different anisotropy orientations beta, which varies uh, between zero to 90. But you may ask that why anisotropy exists in some materials. This anisotropy is a result of the preferred orientation of microcracks and constituent minerals. And of course, once uh, this exists, we can expect that various mechanical properties become direction dependent. For example, in these samples, which we use this green cell granite for our experiments, we can visibly observe these parallel um, planes uh, which are the foliation planes of green cell granite. And uh, the, these planes are coinciding with the isotropy plane. Green cell granite basically exhibit a sort of transversely isotropic material. So these planes, this direction uh, forms the first principal direction of the material. And the second one uh, is normal to this direction. Therefore, the elastic modulus uh, along these two directions are different. In one direction is defined as E and in the other direction is defined as E prime. We uh, expect that the apparent density modulus, elasticity modulus uh, for any direction in between uh, has a sort of this distribution and therefore we can see that uh, this elasticity uh, and this uh, type of um, var variation can affect the stress deformation field. But the, prim the uh, parameter that really, uh, that's, is really important in our analysis is the fracture toughness. Fracture toughness basically is a parameter which reflects the material resistance against fracturing. Here we can see two types of fracture toughness. One of them, is the upper part, is defined for the tensile-based failure, and the lower part is defined for the shear-based failure. Once we have a coplanar extension of a mode two crack. In the upper part, uh, we have two principal values. One of the principal value, carbon C1, is defined when the crack is propagating along the direction of the weakest plane. So we measure the fracture toughness, the material resistance against this uh, sort of opening. But the second one is the uh, fracture toughness. Once the fracture propagates perpendicular to the weakest plane. So for any direction in between, carbon C follows a sinusoidal feed of these two principal uh, values. Uh, this has been proved in many papers. And uh, we have this uh, sort of um, concept for the shear based failure as well. So uh, we use this variation uh, for the fracture toughness values in this uh, analysis. Now we need to assess the accuracy of these three uh, models through reliable experimental data. Again, 
we see this definition for the lambda or mode mixity ratio. And as I mentioned before, we had four different sets uh, of uh, loading, mixed mode loading. In the setup that we use, we could simply um, uh, obtain all of these values for um, mode mixity ratios simply by varying these um, ratios of S1 to S2. And uh, for each set, we also had different beta, which is defined as the angle between the main notch and the foliation plane. So according to this setup that we can see here, uh, we could uh, see the interplay between loading and anisotropy. In this case, the mechanical properties for green cell granite uh, basically are used by a paper uh, given by Nejati et al. And uh, we also include the effect of TS stress in this um, analysis. And all of the crack tip parameters were calculated using finite element map. Now we can see the preliminary results of these four sets. The first point that we can see is that the interplay uh, between the loading and anisotropy is best observed in this uh, experiment. This uh, uh, set that we have negative loading ratio show, show us that the king angle in this set uh, are formed um, in the positive region and therefore in this negative set loading uh, promotes the effect of anisotropy. But in the positive sets, as we can see here, the kink angles uh, are formed uh, in the negative region. Uh, and therefore, we can see that in these cases, loading uh, basically uh, opposes the effect of anisotropy. And another thing is that we can see that there is a good agreement between the MTS prediction and the experimental data. But we can see that the predictions made by energy-based criteria such as MSVD and MERRR um, are significantly inaccurate. So we, it seems that we need to modify this energy-based criteria. So we need to revisit the energy-based criteria by first introducing the modified MERR model. Here we can see the schematic representation of the ERR function. As we can see here, this ERR function, or G theta, indeed includes the contribution of opening G1 theta caused by this sigma theta stress, and the contribution of shearing, or G2 theta, caused by this stress tau, tau R theta. So this MERR uh, can predict a potential failure due to both shearing and opening. But the question is that why the MER predictions were so inaccurate? Uh, we think that the reason is caused by this fact that we uh, didn't appropriately normalize the ERR function. So we introduced the modified version of the MERR criterion in our paper in this way. We can see here that the normalized function is defined in such a way that the contribution of opening is normalized with respect to G1C or the critical value uh, due to uh, tensile based failure. And the G2 uh, theta or the contribution of shearing is normalized with respect to G2C or the critical value of ERR due to shear based failure. In this case, we can see that in the classical form, we indeed assume that this G2C is equal to G1C. But in the materials that we are analyzing, such as rocks, this G2C can be nine times greater than the G1C. And of course, in this case, the uh, a classical formulation of MERR uh, can uh, lead to uh, basically inaccurate predictions. Another important point is about this interval of validity, which need to be defined. 
uh, for the contribution of G1 theta. This interval of validity basically confines these terms to the regions in which opening can in fact take place or delta un is positive because otherwise uh, the contribution of this term uh, in this sub function doesn't make any sense so finally uh, we can use this approach for revisiting the second uh, model energy-based model or msed similar to merr we first decompose s theta to two contribution of uh, um, S1 and S2. S1 is caused by sigma r and sigma theta, and S2 is caused by the shear uh, stress. So, because we know that uh, the critical value that we are using, um, or SC, is basically S1C or caused by the tensile base failure, so we need to only include the contribution of S1 to normalize the SED function. And we also need uh, to basically again kind of find this normalized function uh, to an interval in which uh, the um, uh, opening can take place or epsilon theta is positive. And here we can see the Finally, we can see that according to this modification, uh, the energy-based criteria predictions are improved. But of course, again, we can see that the least accurate prediction uh, is predicted by the MSED criterion, even it, uh, in its modification. Finally, we uh, conclude that the proposed modifications are essential for reasonable prediction in anisotropic rocks, uh, the modification that we introduced for the energy-based criteria. And we know that MTS and modified MERR results uh, are um, accurate with respect to this experimental data, but we realize that the MSED criteria criterion even in its modified form uh, yields the least accurate prediction. We know that the MTS in this case is the simple um, criterion that we can use to predict the fracture path, but we need to keep in mind that the MTS predictions are reliable as long as tensile fracturing prevails. In that case, that shearing might precede opening, we need to uh, keep in mind that the MERR criterion is the only model that can be used to predict uh, crack growth due to shear phase. Thank you for your attention.